My name is Drew Taylor Wilson. Today I look like this, but recently I have looked like this. I am here today to talk about who I am and what I do. I'm very lucky that who I am and what I do is intrinsically linked. I am a theatre artist. What that means is that I am a director. I direct productions of lots of different varieties. I am a writer. I generally write plays and poetic writing. And I am a producer. And my producing covers lots and lots of different avenues, be that creating events for outdoor spaces, uh, bespoke things with groups of young people, it could be producing other people's productions or indeed producing my own. I'm very lucky to work in this industry which up until lockdown mostly involved assembling people in groups in a space. So as you can imagine since lockdown I've not been doing much of that at all. As a theatre maker, I like to do stuff like this. I'm waiting for you to Snapchat back. I know where you were three hours ago, it tells me on your Instagram story. You pinged your location somewhere else on Twitter, but I know that's fake because you can't do that. I downloaded TikTok, but I don't really get what it is or how you can contact me on that. You may well be sat on Facebook, but I've seen that you've seen the message. Your message is crystal clear. I'm here, staring at our WhatsApp chat, waiting for it to update. Maybe you hate me. Or maybe you just don't have any signal. Maybe you should try finding some Wi-Fi. I called seven times and I left more than one voicemail with varying levels of detail about my current emotional state. Maybe it's late. Your one emoji text message response isn't enough. I feel rough, I just want a cuddle. And this? in Suffolk, in England. This map shows you where both of those places are. And no, Barry St Edmunds is not a clever name. St Edmund was buried there. I currently live in Glasgow with my husband, our big black cat Samson, our tropical fish, our tropical aquatic snails and our tropical shrimp and hundreds and hundreds of houseplants. I came up to Scotland in 2003 to study at the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland as an actor. Here's my old headshot. I studied for a BA in acting and when I graduated in 2006 I hated it. I didn't want to be an actor I'd lost all my hair and my face was still very young and I was told by several casting directors that I just looked odd. 
feeling a little disheartened with the industry, but more than that, feeling like I really wanted to say my own thing, I started to investigate how to do that. And I had no clue how to go about it. Before I continue, however, here's my mate Cammy to talk to you about what it means to be an actor in the industry right now. What's happening everyone? My name is Cameron Fulton and I am an actor who has worked with a lot with Drew in the past. First of all, I'd like to quickly thank Drew for asking me to have this brief chat with you and in doing so giving me a reason to shower today, which is bro. I'm going to try my utmost to keep this brief, but as you can imagine, there's a lot to cover. Um, I'm just going to quickly give my opinions on what you need or what I believe you need um, and what's important to have in embarking on a career in this mental old world, world, whether that be in acting, directing, writing, producing, because although obviously some of them have specifics, I do think a lot of the character traits um, are important for all of them. They're just different cheeks of the same derriere. Um, one of the most important character traits I believe that you need is resilience. You need to be prepared to not take things personally, deal with constant rejection, grow a thick skin very quickly and let go of the things that you, you cannot affect and you cannot change. Um, you need to understand that there is things that are just out with your control um, and let go of those otherwise you will drive yourself mental, believe me. Um, I think it's important to be honest and realistic. Uh, it's important to realise that you're, you're not going to be working 365 days out of the year so you will need to add many strings to your bow. Uh, whether that be with in between jobs or muggle jobs as some people call them. I in the past have worked behind bars, I've worked at football events, I've worked at concert venues, I've been a twerking iron brew can outside Murrayfield Stadium at the Six Nations, that was a particular highlight, that was well worth the 20 grand in student loan debt. Um, and all of that is with, thankfully, um, having quite a consistent career but these things are just important to keep your head above the water and it does help you keep your feet in the ground and make those moments when you are off the job and whatever you've trained as uh, all the more sweet and all the more beautiful things to have um, which leads me to my next point I think it's important to be kind to both yourself and to others um, in order to enable you to always enjoy the experience of working in what it is that you've, you've wanted to do and trained to do um, sometimes you wait some time for that job, so you need to really savour it and remember the times when you were twerking outside Murrayfield Stadium and how you don't want to be doing that. So even if someone is unkind to you or you don't get off on the right footing, always be kind back, always be kind to yourself and knowing that these are the moments that you've trained for and worked for um, any time that you're working. Take time to switch off, always take time to switch off. Do not let your career totally encapsulate your life. Um, it's not the way to do it. You can't allow your professional career to project onto your personal life and the, the personal relationships that you have or the relationship with yourself. It's always important to switch off um, and do your best again to let go. Uh, yeah, that's, I, I mean, Drew asked for 30 seconds and it's now 2 minutes 40, so apologies, mate. Um, if you do have any questions, then please do get in touch with me. I'm more than happy to chat you through anything uh, that I can do. Uh, I hope you're all staying safe, staying well, as well as your families during these mental times. I'm sending lots of love. I wish you all the best of luck. And yeah, I'll see you out there. Lots of love. Thanks, Cam. You might recognise Cammy from the video earlier. Or you might recognise him from the telly. Yep, that's Cammy in River City. At the moment. Cammy and I have worked together a lot. We have collaborated on numerous projects and I'm very, very lucky to also call him a very good friend. He's a collaborator and that is something that I think is really, really important to do in all forms of artistic work. Find someone who does stuff that works well with your stuff and that you don't think is awful as a human being. Someone that you could go and have a drink with or sit and have a coffee with, or sit and watch a film with, when we're allowed to do that again. <laughs> anyway, on my path to work out exactly what it was I wanted to do in the arts, I was very lucky and maybe loud-mouthed enough to find myself working in various different forms on various different projects. I was an actor, I did some choreography, I did some directing, I did some producing, I did some writing, I did some designing even. I worked in backstage capacities, I delivered marketing projects, I worked for education departments. All of this experience was invaluable to me and my development, but what I realised eventually was that I did need to specialise, even if my specialty was that I kind of did a few things. 
What I mean by a few things is that it's not really helpful to advertise that you can do everything. I mean, even if you can do lots of things. It's helpful to say that you can do a few. Be well known for doing a few because then you can get employed doing those few. People can think of you in more than just one capacity. That's useful. But don't give them loads and loads and loads of options because people will get confused. Drawing on a colourful past, I think makes me a better artist. It gives me an understanding of everybody in theory that works on a performance production. My colourful past has meant that my approach as a theatre maker is varied. I work in art forms that kind of cross over from each other. I create performances that sit in between genres and I love when things are a little bit difficult to categorise. I create queer work, I create messy work, I create athletic, poetic work. I make work that uplifts voices that are seldom heard. And I make that the biggest conscious choice of all the artwork I make. And of course, that has bled into my education practice. Over the last few years, I've started to do lots of mentoring and artist development work, applying the skills that I have to help younger artists bring themselves up. Artists like you. I believe that an artist's work is never done. We are always changing, we are always learning, even long after we've finished our degree that means nothing during a pandemic. <laughs> I like to encourage all the young artists I work with that finding their way through their own art is not necessarily going to be the easiest way. And it's not always necessarily going to be something that looks and feels and tastes and smells just like a play put on a stage by a bunch of actors. It could be very different from that, and that path might be difficult to find, but hopefully I can help guide you to it. So. The purpose of the tasks for today are to help you find and hone your own artistic voice. We're going to look at aspects of you and how those aspects of you can help enhance all of your artwork. And your second is giving you the tools to create something that responds in its immediacy to the world around you right now. All of this is going to be done, influenced of course by my style, but I strongly urge you that in how you respond, it's all you, it's all yours. Maybe these tasks help you find your own style, maybe they could be something that we might collaborate on later in the future. Enjoy. Okay, so task one being an expert. I am not an expert in very much. I treat myself as an expert in the things that I know I'm good at. And I've, over years of, well, bullying and just trying to get things right, I've learned what things I do do properly. <laughs> do do. So, what are you expert in? You. No one else gets access to that glorious brain of yours. Some people might know you really well, but it is only you that gets to sit in that wonderful head of yours. So, that's the first thing on your list that you're expert in. You. Oh, we're making a list by the way. For this next bit, you will need to either work with a pal, you can do it digitally if you need to, you need to write something down, or you need to use the voice recorder function on your phone, for example, so that you've got a record of this for afterwards. So, you are an expert in you, and you want to be an artist, right? Someone who makes things happen in some kind of performative context. Artists, well, they kind of know themselves quite well. So, how do you find out what bits of you make you a good artist? I mean, slow down, this isn't some kind of therapy session, but I am asking you to look a little bit at yourself. This is designed to help keep you on your track, maybe put you on a new track, but definitely it's something to stimulate you. Please take as little or as much from this as you like. With your pal, get them to ask you what personality traits they think you have. You'll have lots of opinions about what personality traits you think you have, but together you should come up with a list. It's the things that most immediately spring to mind. It's the strongest personality traits that you have. And try, on your list, to write the numbers 1 to 5, or definitely talk through them on your voice recorder, 
five things that are the most strong personality traits that you have. Now that you've got those first five, you've already got five things that you're expert in. You are maybe expert in being kind. You are maybe expert in being sensitive. And by the way, that's a good thing. You are maybe an expert in caring for people, having a great sense of humor. These are wonderful things that you are expert in. And that is unique to just you. You're gonna work with your pal again. And number six to 10, I want you to fill out things that you are really, really good at. It might be building things, it might be organising people, it might be singing. And I think you could realise how those things could help you in your art career. But I'm asking for other things too. Maybe you're really good at cleaning the bathroom. Maybe you're great at recalling the entire timeline and complicated family tree of the Kardashians. Maybe you're good at cross stitch. Or maybe you're really good at googling and searching through eBay to find 80s collector's toys for your dad. So get your pal again and write down from 6 to 10 all the things that you are expert in, that you are expert at doing. Now, look down at your list. That is 10 things that you are expert in. The final bit of this task is to hang out with your pal and chat together about how you think those 10 things could be useful for your career. What is it you want to do? Even if you don't know what you want to do, maybe these things can help guide you. Maybe this conversation can spark something that lights a bulb somewhere that lets you maybe get that little bit further into finding out what it is that you want to do. Thanks for that. Hope you enjoyed it. So, now that you chatted about what you're expert in, I wanted to set you your final task. So, the link that I've provided is to a YouTube video by a brilliant artist called Anis Mojani. Anis Mujani is a performance poet, and this is his poem, Shake the Dust. Enjoy. Now that you've watched the poem, what did you like about it? What was unusual about it? How did the performer make you feel? What does he do to really, really latch you into all those words? What were the bits you didn't like? Why was that? Anais is a brilliant artist that I have admired for years, and this is what he has to say about the advice he'd give to young artists. You can find all of this and more on his website. So, Shake the Dust is a dedication to those who need a bit of love and a shout out. And I'm going to ask you to make your own Shake the Dust, to send out some love and a shout out to people who right now need that. So either writing it down or speaking it into a phone, I'd like you to think of some people that you think need a shout out right now during lockdown in the UK. When you think of these people, I want you to turn it into a line of a poem. The line of the poem should begin with how Anis begins his. This is for the, this is for the, this is for the. When you're thinking of the people, I want there to be an action involved in how you write it down. So it's not just, this is for the doctors, it's, this is for the doctors who have worked long hours and come home and have to isolate even from their family. This is for the toddlers not doing very well at their craft, it looks nothing like the picture. Or, this is for mum, she keeps thinking of things to do in the garden to keep the stepdad occupied. I'll give you 15 minutes to come up with your lines. Either work with someone at home to help you, write it down, or maybe just put it into a speakerphone again. Your 15 minutes starts now. Now look at your list. Maybe edit them a little bit, make them sound a bit punchier. Maybe test them out with a pal. Remember, each line starts with, this is for the you will have created your own Shake the Dust. Enjoy. And finally, thank you. This has been magic and a little bit weird. <laughs> I've never made these kind of videos before. It's very strange. My husband's standing here holding a gold thing that's meant to light my face up beautifully. 
It's also his camera that's recorded all of this. So give him a big thank you as well. Lockdown is weird. And remember, we have to live through it. It's not just about survival. It's about really just embracing everything that's happening. Yes, some times will be down. Yes, some days will be up. But stay safe. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.